A very good evening and thank you so much for joining us tonight on BTV Major News at 6. Reaching you live from the city, the Edo State Capital, Nigeria. My name is Olua Tsui Uyidola. Let's quickly take a look at the highlights for tonight. It starts from a policy thinking. and You cannot but continue to push hard. Um, just don't give up because my, my, my term in government, I've come to realize that Part of the challenge is lack of knowledge and arrogance of government and people in power. So unless you continue to push, you, we may not, make the, we may not be able to get through the message. So I encourage you to continue to. The amendment I seek to Section 13 of the Electoral Act is to cure the lacuna that exists in transfer of voters' card from one constituency to a new constituency where the voter intends to reside or where he resides. This amendment to the Electoral Act is revolutionary, is dynamic, and is futuristic. Let me sound a note of warning to recalcitrant uh, smugglers that their days are numbered. <laughs> And the 19th Street project is a very strategic project, as you can see. And I think over the time, you know, there's been lots of design changes, even addition, uh, extra streets, adjoining streets um, added. What we can guarantee for this 19th Street everyone is that during the rainy season, it will be very passable. The president is very happy seeing us. He's a Democrat to the core. And what has happened in Edo shows that Mr. President is a Democrat, is a voice for the voiceless. Edo State Governor Mr. Gordon Obaseki says the state has a unique advantage with availability of raw materials that supports production and manufacturing in the state. Obaseki said this when he received the National President of Manufacturing Association of Nigeria MAN or Tumba Francis Meshoye with other executives who were in government house on a courtesy visit. BTV News Best Orator has the details. Governor Godwin Obaseki said the survival of Nigeria depends on the Manufacturing Association of Nigeria man as a body urging them to come out strong and play the role to help redirect Nigeria as a do state is uniquely located with advantage that supports production and manufacturing. Obaseki said Nigeria in the last 40 years has continued to rely on imported goods and services they did not produce and the country have gotten to the point where it must consume what they manufacture in the nation because the country does not have foreign exchange and that man have a role to play by redirecting the country towards manufacturing. We come to the head and let us not kill ourselves. We have no choice but to manufacture. We have to make the things we consume. We can no longer import them because we don't have the resources to. We don't have the foreign exchange to import them. Particularly as we are not exporting any manufactured goods. So the, if any, have any institution today in this country has a role to help us redirect this country is, not, is man. Do not mind if you, if you feel sometimes that you are not being listened to. We have no choice. We'll have to listen to you as government, both at the national and sub-national levels. Governor Basaki said government had to create the enabling environment for the association to thrive and move away from the nation that it's not the government's responsibility to create wealthy people and government should not be in competition with the private sector or people providing services as it affects the policy thinking of government. We are government see these people as criminals, but those who part budget as nationalists. Obaseki said that those state has a unique advantage that supports production and manufacturing, noting that policies of the past resulted to deforestation leading to importation, but steps taken to address the trend. He noted that his administration has come out with a strong environmental policies to regrow the forest and wood industry, ensuring that forest guard is reintroduced to police the forest and stop illegal logging 
create encouraging policies for people who want to go into timber plantation. The governor said that the state has the largest agricultural program in the continent as it relates to oil palm. The state, through the ESOPP, gave seven investors 70,000 hectares of land to grow oil palm. The governor said the opportunity in the state is huge and enormous and the requirement is to change the challenges with long-term investments. It starts from a policy thinking and you cannot but to continue to push hard. Um, just don't give up because my, my, my term in government, I've come to realize that part of the challenge is lack of knowledge and arrogance of government and people in power. So unless you continue to push, you, we may not make it, we may not be able to get through the message. So I encourage you to continue to. The national president of the Manufacturing Association of Nigeria, Man Francis Otuba, commended the governor for his administration's giant strides in making Edo State a leading destination for private sector investment. He noted that the branch executives have, have attested to the efforts in transforming the state business landscape and sued for collaboration to achieve desired objectives to grow the manufacturing industry. Mr. Otuba said they are on a tour of duty in Edo and Delta states and the visit is ahead of the meeting of the zone of the sector and is a key driver to rapid technological growth with linkages in employment creation and quality goods and services. Amongst of our observation is Alagoda Road Summit, which has created a platform for engagement as is, and is a step in the right direction. We are also pleased with the success recorded by your administration with the following projects known to us. The 6,000 barrels per day Edo Modular Refinery and Petrochemical Company, located in Olobo. The 2,500 barrels per day Duport Refinery, run by Duport Refinery Company Limited, which is very good. Also, the Green Hill Farms Ethanol Factory, Edo Tech Park, and Osiomo Independent Power Plant, including Edo Production Hub. Governor Basaki assured the visitor that Edo State will continue to, to play host to investors. Best orator reporting for BTV News. A team of engineers from the Ministry of Roads and Bridges at Doe State continues inspection tour of ongoing road construction projects and drainages in Benin City. The projects inspected by the team included the Popular Uwelu Road, Mechanic Road at Old Siloko Road, Temboga Road, Omomo Streets by Stadium Road, as well as Adesua Road at New Benin Area and Osazua Streets in the GRA axis of Benin City. BTV News Best Orator has the details. There is a special tour of ongoing road construction projects in Benin City by the team from the Ministry of Roads and Bridges, Edo State, led by the Commissioner Honorable E. Tauzame, continues with a visit to the popular and once flooded 2.1 kilometer Uwelu Spear Pass Market Road, where solid drainage was seen to be constructed to arrest the lingering flood problem in the area. The underground drainage extends from Wasota Road to Siloko Road Junction, where the flood water is channeled to the stormwater project at Otete Street to Texamin Road. Also visited by the team from the Ministry of Roads and Bridges was the 1.575 kilometer long mechanic road off Old Siloko Road, where Dua underground drainage was being constructed to link over community to a school at Usei Community. The contractors Eros Limited are expected to salvage the flooding in the area by the construction of the network of drainage and flood cash pits already being put in place. <laughs> Next, the Ministry of Roads and Bridges Inspection Team visited the 2.831 kilometer long Temboga Road at Ikoba Hill area in Ikoba local government area of the state, where a complex system of drainage was being constructed to solve the erosion problem in that area of Benin City. According to the Commissioner, Ministry of Roads and Bridges, Edo State, Honorable Itaun Zame, the construction of roads and drainage projects will be finished in October this year. Kenya is going to be finished in October. It's going to be finished October. Um, the yes, and the 19th Street project is a very strategic project, as you can see. And I think over the time, you know, there's been lots of design changes, even addition, uh, extra streets, adjoining streets, um, 
added. What we can guarantee for this 19th Street Evans is that during the rainy season, it will be very passable. Other ongoing road projects inspected by the State Ministry of Roads and Bridges include Omomo Street by Stadium Road, Adesua Road at the New Bini area, Usazua Street at the GRA Bini City. Best Orator reporting for BTV News. A bill to amend Section 13 of the Electoral Act of 2022 has gone through second reading at the House of Representatives. The intention of the amendment is to allow for easy transfer of voters card operation from where it was first registered to where the electorate presently resides. BTV News Tosin Tolua Loju has the report. House of Representatives member Honorable James Faleke of the Keja Federal Constituency moved for the second reading of the Bigu to amend Session 13 of the Electoral Act of 2022. I rise to move for a bill of an act to amend Section 13 of the Electoral Act 2022 to introduce new provisions to ensure that a person seeking transfer of his or her voter's registration data resides in a constituency to which he or she is applied and for related matters AD1133 AD1 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 be, be read the second time I so move this Seconded by Honorable Eweka Bejide and securing popular endorsements by the House, Honorable James proceeded to lead the debate. Honorable James during the debate said that the purpose of the amendment is to cure the lapses which exist in the transfer of voters' card from one constituency to a new one where the voter resides. He stated that the new procedure to be followed will require the applicant's presentation of evidence of his transfer to a new abode such as a utility bill. The main uh, clause is the subsection 4, as Lila introduced, that the person seeking the transfer must show evidence, physical or otherwise, for the resident electoral commissioner of his existence in his new place of abode. This evidence is by showing the applicant's utility bill. The amendment I seek to section 13 of the Electoral Act is to cure the lacuna that exists in transfer of voters' card from one constituency to a new constituency where the voter intends to reside or where he resides. Seconding the bill, Honorable Sada Soli Jubia stated that the amendment of the Electoral Act is revolutionary, dynamic and futuristic, also adding that the electorate must be made to prove residence. This amendment to the Electoral Act is revolutionary, is dynamic and is futuristic. Our laws must be futuristic. Speaking against the bill, Honorable Kelechi Ingo queried the use of the utility bill since it comes in the name of the landlord and can create room for falsification. When we talk about utility bill, utility bill means the landlord. As a tenant, the utility bill comes directly in the name of the landlord. Speaker of the House of Representatives, Tajuddin Abbas, clarified issues and gave room for other members' views on the bill. So sing to Lua Lojo, reporting for BTV News. Still on legislative matters, a motion to investigate the recent activity of the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Food Security in the distribution of food items palliatives and the alleged non-payment of contractors has been deliberated on at the Federal House of Representatives. This followed a move moved by a member of the House of Representatives during a plenary session. BTV News Faithful Okwokam has the details. Honorable Connie Clement of the Yila Boluaduro constituency in Oshu State during a plenary session moved the motion for the House of Representatives to urgently investigate the distribution of food palliative and the non-payment of contractors. He reminded the House of the approval the National Assembly gave to the 819 million projects presented by the presidency, which included palliatives to cushion the effect of the failed subsidy removal and noted the amount the Federal Ministry of Agriculture spent on each federal constituency. I rise this morning to move a motion on the urgent need to investigate the distribution of food palliative, item palliatives, and non-payment of money to contractors by the Federal Minister of Food 
and agriculture and food security. The House notes that the National Assembly at a few months ago approved the sum of 819.5 billion presented by the President, which included a 500 billion Naira palliative package to cushion the effects of the fuel subsidy removal. Also notes that the Ministry of Agriculture and Food Security only distributed rice and food items as palliatives and sort of constituent C projects worth of 100 million per federal constituency. As a point of order, the leader of the House objected the motion, saying that a proper briefing has not been done, which will give room for misconception and misinterpretation, adding that Honorable Akoni should make proper consultations first. But we are objecting to this motion because the issues being canvassed are not within the public sphere and we have not been properly and adequately briefed and if not properly handled, could be misconstrued, misinterpreted, and misrepresented to confuse the public. And I want to say you should step it down, and you should approach the leader and the DS for further consultation. Consenting to the objection, Honorable Akoni Clement decided that he would make other consultations on the matter. The motion was thereafter stepped down by the Speaker of the House for further consultation. Faithful Wokam reporting for BTV News. Edo State House of Assembly has directed the Chief Judge of the State, Justice Daniel Okungwa, to set up a seven man panel to investigate the impeachment notice on the Deputy Governor of the State, Right Honorable Comrade Philip Shaibu, upon allegations of gross misconduct and divulging the State Government's information to the public. The panel is expected to carry out through thorough investigation into the allegations and make necessary recommendations. Recall that the House of Assembly has earlier served an impeachment notice on the deputy governor this month. According to the Speaker, Shaibu denied being served notice of impeachment, which led to a substituted service through advertorial in the newspaper. That the matter be investigated. And meanwhile, Section 188 sub 4 requires a two third majority for the matter to be sent for investigation. But we had 19 members voting. That is more than that about 20 people above the 16 persons required. Similarly, a federal high court in Abuja has given a restraining order to stop any purported impeachment process or notice arising from any allegation of gross misconduct brought against Edo State Deputy Governor, Right Comrade Philip Shaibu. The court's restraining order is against the Edo State Government, the Governor of the State, Godwin Obasaki, the State House of Assembly, the Speaker, Honorable Blessing Agwebaku, the Clerk of the House of the Assembly, the Chief Judge of the State, the Inspector General of Police and Director General of State Security Service. The report. The restraining order by the Federal High Court is to put a stop to any purported process or notice of any allegation of gross misconduct against the Edo State Deputy Governor, Comrade Philip Shaibu, on the ground that such process or notice is a violation of Section 188 of the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. An injunction restraining the defendants and their agents, privies and representatives from interfering with, restricting, disempowering and or preventing the plaintiff from discharging his constitutional duties and functions as the duly elected deputy governor of Edo State in a joint and equal ticket with the second defendant, the governor of Edo State. In the suit's case, number FHC slash ABJ slash CS slash 321 slash 2024 further seeks an order forthwith reinstating or restoring the full and total rights and privileges attached or accruing to the office of the plaintiff as duly elected deputy governor of Edo State, which include, but not limited to, the restoration of all media team, press crew attached to the office of the plaintiff as deputy governor of Edo State, and relocating the plaintiff back to his office within the government's house of the first defendants, Edo State Government. The summons were taken out by Professor Oladoui Awoyale, SAN of Doi Awoyale, SAN and Co., on behalf of the Deputy Governor, Comrade Philip Shaibu. 
The court's restraining order raised three questions for determination, as follows. One, whether as a democratically elected deputy governor of Edo State in a joint ticket with the second defendant, the governor, Mr. Godwin Obasaki, the plaintiff, Comrade Philip Shaibu, is not entitled to remain in office. As such, freely exercise his rights, privileges, and discharge his constitutional duties to the people of Edo State as deputy governor of Edo State within the full time allocated to the office by the Constitution, Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999 as amended without intimidation, threats of coerced resignation, and or illegal removal from office by the third, fourth, fifth defendants at the instigation and support of the first state government and second defendants, Governor Obaseki. 2. Whether under and by virtue of Section 36, Subsection 1 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, as amended, the plaintiff is not entitled to fair hearing from the defendants in the determination of his civil rights and obligations in relation to his office as Deputy Governor of Edo State, either generally or in the course of the process of his removal from office. 3. Whether by the combined provisions of Sections 36 and 188 of the Constitution, Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, as amended, any process for the removal of a deputy governor of a state can be contemplated, construed, and or carried out without regard and adherence to the principles of fair hearing, due processes, and express procedures as stipulated by the Constitution. Oluwatoi Oyedola, reporting for BTV News. Now, last week, the Secretary to the Edo State Government, SSG Barrister Osaodio Ogi, was confirmed as the running mate of Dr. Aswe Godalo, the People's Democratic Party governorship candidate for the forthcoming Edo State Governorship election. It was gathered that Ogi's nomination was occasioned by his popularity and wide acceptance amongst the people in Edo South, a senatorial district that is adjudged as the most populous amongst the three senatorial districts in Edo State. In this special report, we profile the deputy governorship candidates of the People's Democratic Party, Barrister Usao Dion Uge. The report. The secretary to Edo State Government, Barrister Usao Dion Uge, is a politician, administrator, and a lawyer like Dr. Igodalo, a brilliant policy developer and renowned strategist whose sterling contributions have eroded significant peace, stability, and progress in Edo State and Nigerian polity, according to his supporters. Ogie was born on 24th day of September 1960. He has his educational background at Egosa Grammar School, Benin City, University of Ife, now Obafemi Awolowo University, Leife, where he bagged LLB between 1981 to 1985 before he proceeded to Nigerian Law School for his Bachelor of Law and was caught bar in 1986. From there, he became the principal partner of Saudio Oge and Co. until politics beckoned on him and he was appointed Chief of Staff to Comrade Adam Soshomale between 2008 to 2012 and then Commissioner for Works between 2012 and 2016. Osaro Dio during former Governor Adam Soshomale's administration, was a Chief of Staff and later appointed Commissioner for Ministry of Works, now known as the Ministry of Roads and Bridges. Many people see Barrister Osaro Dio as a man with a very stable emotions. He is perpetually in work mood. The dependable secretary to Edo State Government assumes all the trapping of a resources manager of people. No wonder his friends cut across party divide. Ogie, no doubt has a heart that truly cares about others. His gates are always open to all. A man that never underrates anyone. A man who not only listens, but prefers solutions to challenges. Tales a band of his goodwill. Tales of his empowerment. Tales of his philanthropy. Tales of his benevolence. And these are not tales of moonlight, but they are verifiable tales of a man whose heart is golden, proven by actions, a man with a milk of human kindness. Barrister Osao Diongi, as Elia said, came into political limelight in 2008 when the former governor of Edo State, Comrade Adam Sushomale, appointed him as his chief of staff. Prior to his appointment, he coordinated the legal team that fought for Shomale's victory over Professor Seri Meo's governorship both at the Election Petitions Tribunal and the Court of Appeal. Since after that victory in 2007, nothing has stopped Barrister Osao Diongi, the man with a soft voice from going higher with so much political relevance. For serving meritoriously in the first four years, Ushomole gave him a bigger portfolio as commissioner for works. He superintended most of the laudable projects that became the hallmark of Ushomole's eight years as governor of Edo State. Even with the important positions he occupied, 
He has never displayed any form of arrogance, which is a characteristic of the average Nigerian politician who at different moments may attain a little position of authority and then become swollen headed. Ogie is down to earth, highly connected, and knows how to navigate the political and social terrain. Barrister Osaudi Ogie appraised an open door policy that endears him to all those that came across him. It is on record that amongst Oshomole's cabinet at that time, even now as the secretary to a do state government under the Governor Gordon Obaseki led administration, Barrister Osaudi Ogie doors are always open. Anytime you visit his office and the door is closed, it is obvious it's not immediately in the office is perhaps engaged in other official assignments. The open door policies of Barrister Osao Diogi started when he was the chief of staff and through the period he was commissioner for works under Oshomole. It is the same lifestyle he adopted even in his private residence in GRA Benin City where the gate is always open and closes whenever there was nobody coming in or going out and this is the reason he is fondly called the feed mashar. Like a true party man who cherishes and adores loyalty. His patience was tested prior to the governorship election of 2016. He did not betray his emotions, but decided to abide by party decision that Mr. Gordon Obaseki should be the governor of Edo State. Even with his huge number of followers and being in charge of the party structure in the state, Barrister Osao Diongi collapsed his political machinery to work for the emergence of Mr. Gordon Obaseki in 2016. As a loyal party man with principle, Ogi has remained a loyal and trusted friend to his boss, Governor Gordon Obaseki. And so when the chief swear down, he voluntarily followed Mr. Obaseki to the PDP prior to the 2020 governorship election and stuck with him through good and bad times. Barrister Ogi's ability to prefer solutions in difficult political situations has become a legacy that has earned him respect from all quarters to the extent that today he is regarded as an encyclopedia of politics in Edo across party lines. It is the characteristics of Ogi to have people around him both at work and during his moment of relaxation. His philosophy has always been that the people are working with him and not for him. He is also a man of tender and kind heart, a hard worker who expects everyone around him to do the same. He is a philanthropist that gives quietly without blowing trumpets. In 2007, he was awarded the Oba Merit Award by Oba A. Diawa CFRO of Blessed Memory. He was also the Director General Gordon Obaseki Governorship Campaign Team in 2016 before attaining the present position of Secretary to the State Government. Barrister Osao Diogi is a great sportsman. He plays football, tennis, golf at his leisure time and takes delight in swimming for relaxation. And that's our special report for today on the Deputy Governorship Candidate of the People's Democratic Party in the September 21 Edo Governorship Election. Best Orator reporting for BTV News. Senator Monday Okwebulu, the Governorship Candidate of the All Progressives Congress, APC has declared that it was about time for a new Edo to be birthed as preparations for him to win the forthcoming governorship election were on top gear. BTV News best orator has the details. Are you determined? Are you? If you are, we are determined. We are going to work with you. We are going to stay with you like rock of Gibraltar. The party is supreme. Because victory is superior and very, very important. But you prove yourself as people we can trust and people we can fight for. The Edo State Governorship candidate of the All Progressive Congress, Senator Mondi Okwebulu, has appreciated President Bola Tinubu describing him as a true Democrat. He said that the just concluded APC governorship primary was well conducted and appreciated the national leadership of the party for conducting a free, fair, and transparent primaries. He said that the governorship candidate of the party and his running mate, Right Honorable Dennis Idahosa, have begun journey to take over the governance of Edo State. Mr. President has just given us a word of encouragement as a father. He has spoken well. He said word, words that came out of his mouth were words of knowledge. So I keep them to myself, to my chest. I'm going to work with them. What has happened in Edo shows that Mr. President is a Democrat. He's a voice for the voiceless. The primary in Edo was well contested and a winner emerged. We have our deputy now. We are setting the ball rolling. 
sky is our limit. Now it's time to say bye bye to PDP in Edo. And development, Edo, New Edo is rising. Highlighting his political history of providing free transportation, water, and other basic amenities, as well as the awards of scholarship to the people of Edo Central Senatorial District, where he hails from, he asserted that Edo people will vote in his favor and that they were ready to turn Edo State into a construction site. If you look at my history, even the governor, what I've done it for Edo people, the governor have not done it for eight years. I've been providing free transportation for Edo Central people, where I came from, creating boreholes for our communities, providing for securities, a lot, providing scholarship for school children. So the record I have, the, the, the governor has not been able to achieve it for eight years as a governor. Senator Modi Okbevolu praised President Tinubu for his fatherly love, vowing to make good use of his counsel. He appealed to Edo people to look the way of the APC when it's time for election. Best orator reporting for BTV News. The Federal High Court in Abuja has denied bail to the leader of the proscribed indigenous people of Biafra, Namdi Kanu. Justice Binta Nyako in a ruling held that the court would only grant an accelerated hearing in the matter and ordered the prosecution to call its first witness. Reacting to the ruling counsel, Mr. Kanu Aloy Ejimako expressed his displeasure with the ruling. He held that they cannot go on with the proceedings if they have not been given any opportunity to speak with their client. It has been very difficult to have a meeting with Mr. Kanu in the custody of the DSS as their conversation with him is always being monitored and Mr. Kanu is still wearing the same outfit which the court ordered to be changed. He alleged foul play going on in the court, which is against the constitution and team of lawyers representing Mr. Kanu and they are not pleased with what is happening in the court. He requested a stand down of the case to enable them to consult with Mr. Kanu. In recent times, Kajuru and Chikun local government areas in Kaduna Central Senatorial Districts have come under heavy attacks, including the abduction of 287 students at Kuriga community in Chikun. This has made the chief of defense staff to pay a visit to the state to boost morale of troops and also to assure the governor that they are doing everything possible to rescue those kidnapped. BTV News, Angela Ileguma has the details. Following an upsurge in the kidnap cases, the Chief of Defense Staff, General Christopher Musa, arrived at the state government house to meet with Governor Ubasani. While speaking during the meeting, which also had representative of the Kurunga community in attendance, General Musa assured that the adopted students and those who were recently kidnapped by bandits at Kajuru would soon be rescued. According to him, the military and other security agencies are working tirelessly to free the hostages. Doctrine, as we know, is a social activity. People are doing it for their own sake. Some are doing it to bring down the government, to make the government look weak. But we guarantee that this will end. We are doing everything possible to ensure that we achieve success, and we will achieve success. We are also trying to stop it, to make sure that it does. But what we require is for Nigerians to give us support. Most times when we get information, it comes in a bit late. Before we react to get there, it is late. But we are happy with the way people are responding. You can see from what happened in Delta State how Nigerians are responding. Everybody supporting the armed forces and the security forces, that is what will ginger the troops to continue to do more. He vowed that all those behind the kidnappings and attacks in Kanduda and other states in the northwest zone will soon be apprehended. But you, the parents, we know you have been spending sleepless nights. We equally are doing the same. We are with you in this. I will continue to be with this. And Your Excellency want to assure you that uh, we will put in everything possible. We are making some adjustments to ensure that Kaduna is secured. The Northwest is secure, Nigeria is secure. Uh, because everybody is tired of what's going on. And for those individuals that have sworn that there will be no peace, they will have no peace. We will ensure that we fo follow them up wherever they are. And those ones that are sponsoring them and encouraging them to do the same. For their own good, they should stop. While speaking earlier, Governor Sani said the state was getting support from both army and police. Here in Kaduna, like I said, we are doing everything to ensure that we protect the lives and properties of our citizens. 
because we believe the process of love and property of our citizens is the most important responsibility of our government. Angela Ilekuma reporting for BTV News. The Nigerian army has announced that its troops have rescued 16 out of the 87 residents abducted on Sunday night by bandits in Tantatu community in Kajuru local government area of Kajuna state. This was disclosed in a statement by Major General Onyama Mwachuku, the director of Army Public Relations. He explained that troops, in response to actionable intelligence, tracked the insurgents, engaged them in a fierce firefight, and successfully rescued the abducted villagers. Recall that 87 persons, including minors and infants, were abducted when armed terrorists invaded their community Sunday night. In the last eight days, suspected terrorists have carried out at least three separate attacks on communities in Kajuru local government area, kidnapping over 160 individuals. As it stands, over 140 persons still languish in captivity in unknown destinations. The Defense Chief Christopher Musa, while visiting Kaduna on Monday, gave assurance of the military's commitment to rescue all those abducted. The Ogun State Command of the Nigerian Customs Service, NCS, has intercepted 940 cartridges of live ammunition meticulously concealed in sacks of gari and other harmful substances imported from the neighboring Republic of Bene. The report is presented by Regina Ojomo. Parading the seizure at the Dioroko Command of the Custom, the ERA Controller, Ogu Command 1, Hamadu, said this was made possible through credible intelligence gathering from members of the public, which also led to the 3,172 piles of Hindi arms, amongst other prohibited items. Shuaibu noted that despite the rigorous surveillance and security measures employed by the smugglers to invade, arrest, and superior security network of the command, facilitated the seizure of the items saying that the suspected smugglers of the ammunition managed to escape abandoning the seized item. He highlighted other significant achievements of the command, including the interception of 123 CAC and 3,172 parcel of cannabis sativa in their hands and 380 pieces of donkey skin, 304 bills of used clothes and 110 cartons of frozen poultry products. This incredible intelligence our operators intercepted, smuggled 940 rounds of live ammunition, ingeniously concealed in sacks of cassava flakes, commonly known as Gary. Shwaibu appreciated the continuous support of the Comptroller General of Custom, Bashir Radeni, and his management team in the ongoing effort to combat smuggling and enforcing revenue generation. While warning the smugglers that their days are numbered, he noted that they will never go unpunished for their notorious activities. The CAC appealed to well-meaning and patriotic Nigerians to join force with the command in his fight against the smuggling of harmful substances, light weapons, arms and ammunition, emphasizing that the command is open to receive intel and assuring prospective partners of maximum security. Let me sound a note of warning to recalcitrant uh, smugglers that their days are numbered. Turn us together to make our society a safe and peaceful place to live in. Regina Ujomo reporting for BTV News. The recent killings of 16 soldiers in the Okwama community in Ugeli South local government area of Delta State by some irate youths have triggered massive reactions from lots of Nigerians who describe the ugly incidents as sad and pathetic. The report. The death of the 16 army officers while on a peace mission in Ukwama community in Delta State 
on Thursday, March 14, 2024, came as a shock to Nigerians who mourned their demise, stating that it was quite painful that they had to pay the ultimate price in the cost of keeping the nation safe and united. Some persons who expressed their utmost displeasure at the massacre described it as totally unacceptable and pleaded with the federal government to tackle the rising cases of insecurity in the country. I frown on at it. But if I may say, who are those people that perpetrate that uh, uh, act, that dastardly act? Are they really the indigents? And now, if the soldiers are going for a reprisal attack, who are they going to retaliate to? Is it the same indigent, or is it the, the is it are they, will they meet the corporates? That is one question. Would they meet those people that perpetrated that act, or would they be uh, 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 revenging? on and uh, 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 the citizens that are innocent people that does not know how what because the people that that did that thing i believe they will no longer be visible for the soldiers to get when challenges come like this we are not supporting that uh, uh, individually or some the or criminalities to kill our military men it's not done so we we please with the federal government to do one or thing two things to equip our military men, not to just the kill them like uh, just a uh, good. The government need to sit down proper and look all the areas, all the loophole, all the things that the people don't like, and the people that the thing that people like. So when they work like that, I'm not sure that just kill it again. Other respondents decried the killings of the army officers in Delta State, describing it as unfair. They stated that if the safety of Nigerian army officers is not guaranteed, what then becomes of the civilians? They described the ill-fated incident as a clear call for the government to equip the military personnel with the required security gadgets to avoid future occurrence. They opine that the federal government needs to investigate what led to the massacre of the army officers and ensure that the culprits face the full rot of the law in order to act as a deterrent to others. Respondents also appeal to the angry soldiers who are allegedly destroying houses in the affected community to halt the killing of innocent residents while calling for a full probe into the incident. I think um, what should be more concerned now is uh, the safety and the security of the Nigerians. Because if soldiers can be killed, then what is, is, uh, what is the assurance we have as a citizen of this country about uh, when we talk about security? Then think about the 200 or something children, school people, uh, people that were kidnapped. Think about, even in those states here, think about the kidnappers that is kidnapping that is going on, especially the Onwa East every day. Not, the government is not doing anything about it. So it's so terrible. The security as a the security challenge in this country is so terrible. Not that they don't know what to do, they know what to do. For soldiers to be killed like that, that means something is fishing somewhere. Citizens are hopeful that the government will thoroughly investigate the unfortunate incident and prosecute those who are perpetrators of the heinous crime. Meanwhile, President Bola Tinubu has ordered full investigation into incident, said Obiaifo, reporting for BTV News. Governor Ubasani of Kaduna State says despite current security challenges, the state will still forge ahead with its bold vision for infrastructure development. BTV News Tosin Tuluwaloju has details of this report. We've been groundbreaking for the benefit of the business and the humanity in general. Already in Kaduna, there are 15 major road projects ongoing with plans for new extensions. The state government's desire is to connect communities and drive economic growth. Despite the recent wave of insecurity that has raised the threat level in Kaduna State, Governor Uba Sani is pushing forward his infrastructure development agenda. He insists progress would not be hindered by adversity. The governor flagged off the construction of 15 major roads totaling 327 kilometers. We have chosen to perform the groundbreaking at this dual carriageway bridge because it is a key feature of this project. This road, when completed, will ease movement of people and goods. This is just one part of this project. The total number of kilometers 
uh, when this project is completed, will be about 327 kilometers put together. The cost of this project is huge, and we will provide and will provide employment opportunities for over 2,000 of our citizens with the ripple effect of improving human capital development. The projects kick off at the dual carriage bridge linking College Road to Mashigi, extending down to eastern bypass of Millennium City, a pivotal point in the project. There is also the Nuro Siraj Uguanwan Doza new extension layout, which is about 3,400 hectares of land. This project comprises of the provision of water and sanitation to all the communities, provision of power utilities, and it will also occur across about eight districts. And this project, like I said, will call across about three local governments. That is Kaduna North, Egabi local government, and Chukun local government. Residents commended the governor for his commitment to the growth, development, and prosperity of Kaduna State. We are great, great happy. We like the bridge. We like what the governor said about the bridge. And we are happy of what he come and did to us. But we are facing a small problem. Before, they were telling us about they will collect the land. But now the governor have already tell us that they are not collecting our land. They will develop the place. They will make the road to link to MKO Abiola and IBB uh, road. So we are happy for that. To sing to Luwa Loju, reporting for BTV News. The National Identity Com Management Commission, NIMSI, says there is no data breach of any sort, promising Nigerian safe and secure data in the National Identity Database. This comes as the commission received with concerns news from some sections of the media about an alleged breach of citizens' data by a private organization, Express Verify. The head of corporate communications, Kayo De Adegoke, in a statement denied any dealings with Express Verify, saying it is not one of the commission's licensed partners. Adegoke said the commission wishes to state that it offers NIN verification and other services through licensed partners. The Director General and Chief Executive Officer of NIMSI, Abishoye Koka Odusote, has promptly ordered a comprehensive investigation into the matter to find out if any of the commission's tokenization verification agents have in any way breached the licensing agreement, either directly or through any of their sub-licenses. Kukao Dusote affirmed the commitment of NIMC to data protection and privacy, promising that no stone will be left unturned in ensuring the safety and security of the data of all enrollees. Top-level security is in place to protect the NIN and other personal data of every citizen and legal resident, she said. NIMSI reaffirmed its unwavering dedication to safeguarding, securing, and responsibly managing the data entrusted to them. You're still watching VTV Major News. We'll be going on a quick break. Please, stay with us. Authentic and look my mind. Original no be fake no be plenty. EDS for quality plenty. Na EDS for quality plenty. Na EDS for emotion. Super satin, super matto. Gravitas plenty day. Texture plenty day. And the high quality emotion now for EDS. You know, go for the for EDS. EDS Quality Paints, Kilometer 12, Benin Supply Road by Ogege Quarters, Benin City. Or our branch office, 68 Supply Road, opposite former Edo State Library, now ShopRite. Contact us today on 090-5320-6873. EDS Quality Paints, keeping your goals live. The Group Chief Executive Officer of the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, Mr. Mele Kiari, and other officials of the NNPCL will participate in the 2024 Sarah Week Conference scheduled to hold in Houston, United States from March 18th to 22nd, 2024. 
BTV News Gift Uwak Boy has details of this and more from the business desk. A statement by the NNPLC spokesperson Olufemi Sonoye on Monday disclosed that Yari would headline a plenary session titled Leadership Dialogue on Tuesday at the annual conference. Sonoye noted that the NNPLC's executive vice president upstream, Mrs. Orishemi Yiwa Eyesan, would also headline a plenary session with the title What are the Choices for Upstream Strategies? Same day. On Wednesday, March 20, 2024, it will be the turn of the executive vice. Vice President Gas, Power and New Energy, Mr. Olalekon Oguleye, who would be the panelist on a strategic dialogue session titled Africa's Energy Future, Access, Investment and Sustainability. The Association of Licensed Telecommunication Operators of Nigeria has said voice and data services affected by the cuts in the other sea fiber optics along the coast of Côte d'Ivoire and Senegal will be completely restored on Tuesday. Last Thursday, cuts in the undersea cable supplying broadband internet connectivity to Nigeria and other countries in the West African sub-region forced many banks, financial institutions, telecom companies and early firms to scale down their operations. All operators who were impacted by the courts have taken recovery capacity from submarine cables that were not impacted by the courts and have thus recovered approximately 90% of their peak utilization capacities. Mobile network operators have assured the commission that the data and voice services would operate optimally pending full repairs of the undersea cables as they have managed to activate alternative connectivity to bring the situation back to normalcy. Nigerians' total import grew to 35.9 trillion naira in 2023 from 25.5 trillion naira recorded in 2022. According to data by the National Bureau of Statistics, a breakdown of the data showed that in the first and second quarters of 2023, Total imports stood at 6.4 trillion naira. It increased to 9 trillion naira in the third quarter and again to 14 trillion naira in the fourth quarter. By volume, manufactured imports topped the chart with imports worth 18.3 trillion naira. Agric imports stood at 2.2 trillion naira, while imports of raw materials totaled 3 trillion naira. On the other hand, Nigeria was able to shun out exports worth 35.9 trillion naira. However, much of these were under the category of crude oil which constituted 29 trillion naira, while exports of other oil products stood at 3.5 trillion naira. The increase in export comes amid President Bola Tinibu's drive to boost non-oil exports and diversify the economy away from crude oil exports. And that's it on Business News Tonight. I'm Gift Wagba reporting for BTV News. Tonight, I'm Gift and on entertainment, Grammy-nominated Nigerian singer Ira Starr has revealed her desire to be one of the leading Afrobeat artists in Nigeria. The 21-year-old added that it is her desire for the genre to become the biggest in the world. Let's join BTV News' Angela Ileguma for more on entertainment. An interview with Cosmopolitan UK, Arista said, and I quote, My hope for Afrobeat is for it to be the biggest genre in the world, because it deserves to be. Other genres of music are great, but they are nothing like Afrobeat. Even the sad music makes you feel good. So I want Afrobeat to be the biggest genre in the world, and I would love to be one of the leading artists. She disclosed that her dream music stars are Rihanna, Drake, Bono Boy, Beyonce, Vitira Monet, Rema, Mali Cyrus, Kendrick Lamar, and Tyler the Creator. Singer Davido's logistic manager, Israel DMW, has stated that beauty is not the sole factor in the character of a good wife. He made this known while advising Afrobeat singer Kizdanye amid the battle she received after sharing a video of his wife, Jay Anidogbe. Kizdanye had shared a cozy clip of himself with his wife while vibing to his song on Instagram. However, some users who were not pleased with the appearance made critical remarks about her looks and wig. Reacting to the Unlike criticism, Israel in an Instagram post encouraged Kizdanye to prioritize peace of mind over physical beauty. He wrote, Vado, beauty does not make a good wife at home. All you need is the rest of mind. Controversial self-acclaimed relationship expert Blessing Okoro, popularly known as Blessing CEO, has said she supports polygamy, adding that it is dignifying and honorable. According to her, women who are against polygamy are selfish. The divorcee explained that she would not leave her husband for having a child outside their marriage if she was married. Speaking in the latest episode of her TV show, Moment with Blessing CEO, she disclosed that she is a huge fan of polygamy actor Uedoche. She said, 
said polygamy is dignifying for her saying that it is honorable for her blessing said many women are just selfish saying that they support polygamy 100 percent angela ilegoma reporting for btv news And on sports, Nigeria's under-20 women's football team, the Falconets, are set to clash with Ghana in the finals of the women's football event at the 13 African Games in Ghana. In another development, Lionel Messi ruled out of Argentina friendlies due to hamstring injury. Let's join Millicent Agaba for more of this on sports. The Falconets secured their spot in the finals with a 2-0 victory over Uganda in the semi-finals, while Ghana overcame Senegal 3-1. The final match will take place in Cape Coast Stadium on Thursday at 8 p.m. Additionally, Uganda will face Senegal for the bronze medal on the same day at 5 p.m. The Falconets previously clinched the gold medal in the 12th African Games in Rabat, Morocco in 2019. The 13th African Games, which commenced on March 8, are scheduled to conclude on March 23rd with events spread across Accra, Kumasi, and Cape Coast. In anticipation of an electrifying showdown, fans are eagerly awaiting the clash between these two powerhouse teams. The atmosphere at the Cape Coast Stadium promises to be electric as Nigeria and Ghana contend for continental glories. Lionel Messi has been sidelined from Argentina's upcoming friendlies in the United States due to a hamstring injury, as confirmed by the Argentina Football Association on Monday. The Inter Miami star was slated to play in the matches against El Salvador in Philadelphia on Friday and Costa Rica in Los Angeles on March 26. However, the 36 year old Argentine captain sustained a hamstring tweak during Miami's CONCACAF Championships Cup victory over Nashville, leading to his absence from subsequent matches, including Miami's win over DC United. The Argentine Federation announced Messi's withdrawal from the squad via a post on X, formerly Twitter, citing a minor injury to his right leg's hamstring. Australian Sports Commission CEO Perkins has raised serious concerns about the potential risks to athletes' life if the enhanced games proceed as planned. The enhanced game conceived as an Olympic-style event allowing doping was founded by an Australian businessman in 2023, would operate outside the jurisdiction of the World Anti-Doping Agency. Perkins dismissed the concept as laughable during the Sports NXT conference, emphasizing the potential life-threatening consequences of such an environment. As a former Olympic world and Commonwealth champion swimmer, Perkins highlighted the detrimental impact of performance-enhancing drugs on athletes' heads, futures, and families. The enhanced games proposed to future athletics, swimming, weightlifting, gymnastics, and combat sports is still in the planning stage with no confirmed date or venue. And that's it on Sport News tonight. Millicent Agagba reporting for BTV News. And that's it on the news tonight. Many thanks for joining us. My name is Olua Toei Oyedola. Have a good night.